Hello and welcome back gang. This is part two of our lecture series for chapter 26 in your textbook, Give Me Liberty by Dr. Eric Foner. This section is entitled Vietnam and Watergate. The focus question for this section is how did Vietnam and the Watergate scandal affect popular trust in government? In response to the continuing discontent among much of the American populace regarding the war in Vietnam, Nixon began to explore ways to de-escalate American involvement in the war, and he pursued a policy known as Vietnamization. And this is where American troops were gradually withdrawn from Vietnam, with South Vietnamese soldiers trained to take on more and more of the actual fighting responsibilities. This was somewhat countered, however, by the U.S. U.S. invasion of the neutral country of Cambodia. Cambodia was right on the border of South Vietnam, and it had long been known that the North Vietnamese forces had been using Cambodia as a way to funnel troops and supplies from North Vietnam down into South Vietnam. And as a result of this knowledge, the U.S. invaded neutral Cambodia to try to stem this tide of troops and supplies from North Vietnam into South Vietnam. This had the effect of completely destabilizing the government of Cambodia, and it also fueled the discontent among the American populace once this invasion became widely known to the public. Protests over the war continued in this period and spread onto college campuses, and the U.S. government in many of these instances responded harshly and with violence on quite a few occasions. At Kent State, the National Guard killed four student protesters in one of their demonstrations. In Jackson State University, police killed two protesters in one of those demonstrations. All in all, in this period, 21 college campuses were occupied by American National Guard troops at various times to try to quell these demonstrations against the war. As the Vietnam War dragged on into the late 1960s and early 1970s, it became more and more apparent to many American soldiers involved in the war that the war was essentially unwinnable. And as a result, troop morale in Vietnam plummeted. In 1968, the My Lai Massacre occurred, and this is where U.S. soldiers killed about 350 Vietnamese peasants in the village of My Lai that they accused of being North Vietnamese sympathizers. Once news of this massacre reached the American public, it further undermined public support for the war and caused many Americans to begin to demonize American soldiers. The Pentagon Papers also emerged in this period, and this was a report based on a congressional study that was done, and once the study was concluded, it revealed how American leaders had misled the public about the war from the very beginning. And... Although the administration tried to prevent the Pentagon Papers from reaching the press and the American public, it did leak to the press, and once published, it further again undermined public support for the war. In response to the revelations uh, in, that emerged from the Pentagon Papers, Congress passed the War Powers Act, which required congressional approval before American troops could be sent overseas. In 1973, the United States and North Vietnam negotiated the Paris Peace Agreement, which authorized the withdrawal of American troops from Vietnam, but it did not solve the territorial dispute over North and South Vietnam. As the Americans began to withdraw from Vietnam, the North Vietnamese eventually took over the entire country, making Vietnam not only united, but united under a communist government.
government, and the United States did not intervene in this process. This process was completed in 1975 with the fall of Saigon. Saigon was the capital of South Vietnam, and in 1975, North Vietnamese soldiers uh, invaded and took over the capital of Saigon. And this photograph you see here is the last American helicopter leaving from the U.S. Embassy in Saigon as the North Vietnamese forces are taking over the city. And you can see uh, tons of South Vietnamese refugees attempting to board the helicopter to flee with the Americans in the face of the North Vietnamese invasion. This incredible, costly war left many people with what has been known with, uh, as Vietnam Syndrome, which was a skepticism about entering any overseas war. In the election of 1972, Democrats nominated liberal Senator George McGovern. George Wallace, a Southern conservative Democrat, tried to rally conservative Democrats by appealing to racism and populism, but lost the Democratic nomination. Nixon won this election in a landslide, as you can see by this electoral map here that's pretty much solid red across the board. And this showed Democrats that they could not count on white Southerners or Northern white working class voters. Democrats took that lesson and countered by continuing to court black voters and moving further to the left to appeal to counterculture people so that it, like the hippies of the 1960s and new social movements like the women's rights and the gay and lesbian rights movements. Nixon's fatal flaw was that he was obsessed with secrecy and difference of opinion, and this would ultimately prove to be his undoing. During the 1972 election, he actually launched a break-in at the Democratic Party headquarters at the Watergate apartment complex in Washington, D.C., this building you see in this photograph right here, in attempts to gain some inside information he could use against his Democratic opponents. All Although this incident did not directly affect the election of 1972, once the election was over, journalists investigated this incident and discovered that people close to the president had ordered the break-in and subsequent cover-up. Nixon made matters worse when he fired the prosecutor assigned to the case after that prosecutor demanded copies of the secret tapes that Nixon had recorded in the White House. Nixon had a habit of recording all of his conversations conversations in his office, and this was designed to protect him, but it ultimately proved to be his downfall as these tapes revealed just how complicit and knowledgeable that Nixon actually was about the Watergate incident. The firing of the prosecutor became known as the Saturday Night Massacre and exacerbated the scandal tenfold. The Supreme Court unanimously ordered that Nixon turn over those secret tapes of his Oval Office conversations to Congress after the Saturday Night Massacre became public. Once Nixon's secret Oval Office tapes were released to Congress, it became clear that Nixon knew about the break-in and the cover-up. Under threat of impeachment, Nixon became the only president in history to resign his office. The abuse of power, however, went beyond the president. Further investigation revealed that the vice president, the attorney general, and other lower level officials were all involved in this scandal. The Watergate scandal seriously undermined Americans' confidence in their government, and it helped convince many people that conservatives' calls for limited government were correct, and a powerful government cannot be trusted. That concludes part two of our chapter 26 lecture series for your textbook, Give Me Liberty, by Dr. Eric Foner. As always, study hard, and I'll see you soon.